Have you heard of Kerber Roasting? It's the Active Directory attack that might allow you to escalate your privileges and fully pwn your target. Welcome to Learn with Hack the Box, the YouTube series that helps you level up in offensive and defensive cybersecurity. Whether you're a seasoned red team operator or just getting started with ethical hacking, this is where you sharpen the skills that matter most. And today we are diving deep into Kerber Roasting. And I still remember my first Kerber Roasting attack vividly. I was 18 and had found my first real penetration testing gig. A big company gave me a student job and I had a month to try and pwn them. So on my first day I opened up my laptop and decided to see if I could perform a curb roasting attack and it worked. Within just a few hours I had pwned a domain administrator and I walked up to the CISO's office and showed him the password hashes of all 5000 employees. And that adrenaline rush is what got me into hacking and it's still why I love hacking today. So you could say that Kerber Roasting started it all. But what is Kerber Roasting? Let's walk through the attack in theory. First, we have Kerberos. Kerberos is a ticket-based authentication protocol. It's like a ticket booth at a fair. You go to the booth to purchase a ticket and with that ticket you're allowed to ride the ferris wheel. So when running nmap scans you've probably seen port 88 open and that port is the ticket booth within Kerberos. And the first step in Kerberos thing is requesting a TGT or ticket granting ticket. And this ticket it proves that you as a user are authenticated and are allowed to request service tickets. And with this ticket granting ticket, you can then send a TGS request. This is you requesting the ticket booth for admission to a ride, or in AD terms, you're requesting a service ticket. And this service ticket can be used to authenticate to an actual service. For example, you might use it to access an HTTP application or authenticate to MSSQL or connect to an SMB share and so on. So when requesting this service ticket, you do it for a specific service. And these services, they are defined using service principle names or SPNs. And these SPNs are just identifiers for services like HTTP slash webapp.hackthebox.com. And the important part is that this service ticket that you get that gives you access to the service, well, it contains an encrypted component. And this encrypted component can only be decrypted by the account that has the service principal name. And how do you decrypt that encrypted part? Well, using the password. So what if we take that encrypted part and try to decrypt it millions of times with different passwords every time? If it decrypts correctly, then that means that we have a password for the service account and can thus log in as that account. This last part is the cracking of the service ticket. And that is what Kerber Roasting is. But in order to perform a Kerber Roasting attack, you need some prerequisites. We need access to a valid domain user account. Any low privileged account will do. Secondly, we also need to be able to talk to the Kerberos key distribution center on port 88. And you often find this service on the domain controller. This is that ticket booth that we talked about earlier. And then lastly, we just need a target service account that has an SPN, that service principal name. But let's see all of this in action. For this, we're going to be using the Hack the Box machine active. And let's focus on finding a target service account. 
with any low level account, you can find these by just running this LDAP query. Notice how we connect to the domain controller with a user we control, service underscore TGS. We then request all AD objects that have a service principal name set. And that grants us three results. The last one is the KRBTGT account. This is the Kerberos service account and its secret is used to encrypt and sign those TGT tickets we were talking about earlier. This isn't a normal service account and so for the curb roasting purposes we can forget about this one. However, in AD persistence this account can become a very interesting target. The second result is for the domain controller itself. It's for the domain controller's computer account. See how the name ends in a dollar sign? Well, domain controllers they register many SPNs because they provide many network services such as LDAP or DNS. But still, usually a computer account like this one is not a good target for a curb roast attack because the machine passwords are randomly generated by Windows and have a high entropy. So yes, even Windows computers or machines have a password. And technically, you could try to crack that password, but you will rarely succeed. Although, technically it is possible for an administrator to change the password of a computer to a weak one, but I've never seen that myself in the wild. And that leaves one more result to investigate. The administrator. And this is of course one we want to look deeper into because if we Kerberos the administrator account and crack their password, well then it's game over and we've fully pwned this box. So that will be our main target. But as you can tell, this manual process is a bit convoluted. But luckily, tools exist that only show you the interesting targets. It's probably easier if you use Impacket's Get User SPNs tool. This is a great tool to perform curb roasting, and with this tool, you can also request the service ticket or TGS to crack, like this. And as we can see, it shows that the administrator can be curb roasted and even requested the service ticket for us. Now we have the service ticket or TGS and can fully disconnect from the network. From now on we're going to be undetectable. So the only network traffic that we send in a curb roasting attack is an LDAP query to find users with service principal names, then a TGT request to get the ticket granting ticket, and then a TGS request to get the service ticket. And that is all the defenders have to try and detect us. Now we disconnect from the network and go covert. Because right now we'll use Hashcat in mode 13100 to crack the service ticket and to reveal the plain text password. And in this case I'm simply using RockQ and in just a few seconds it shows us the user's plain text password or Kerberos attack worked. Now, sometimes you might be running this attack from a compromised Windows machine. And then you could use tools like Rubius to automate the process for you like this. It also just saves a hash that we can crack like before. And some other tools will also give you what's called a Kirby ticket and in that case you often still need to use the Kirby to John tool to first convert that into a crackable hash but once you have that crackable hash then everything is the same. And once that hash has been cracked then we can simply use it to authenticate as that account and continue pwning our target. That's how simple the curb roasting attack really is. And it's important to know that these are not just techniques used by ethical hackers. The ransomware group Akira, for example, used Kerber roasting in their malware to escalate privileges. Akira has compromised over 1000 victims in the last three years 
and their ransomware has been used in campaigns across multiple continents focusing on critical infrastructure. In reports from Akira campaigns, their ransomware has enumerated service principles, cracked weak service account credentials offline, and then reused those credentials to escalate and move laterally. And this attack is difficult to detect as a defender. Ticket granting tickets and service tickets are constantly going through the network legitimately and so defenders they must be trained to connect the dots under pressure. And that brings us to CTEM or Continuous Threat Exposure Management. It's a continuous program for discovering, prioritizing, validating and remediating exposure and at the center you don't have expensive tools but people. Because it's not the expensive tools that defend organizations against these attacks. It's people. And the strongest defense comes from skilled humans who keep learning, adapting and staying ahead of emerging threats. Because without that, even the best reports and tech are just noise. And if you want to learn more about this and about how to protect against and detect Kerberosting, then check out the Blue Team Learn with Hack the Box video on Kerberosting. I highly recommend it. There's also a new product from Hack the Box for enterprises, the Hack the Box Threat Range, which is a live fire arena where you and your SOC team can practice against real breaches. And this way you can train for those worst case scenarios and make sure that your playbooks are actually validated. So today we looked at the curb roasting attack and how you can use it to pwn your next target. We learned that it's a very quiet and covert attack that can be difficult to detect. But how difficult? Well, for that you'll have to check out the blue team version of this video on the Hack the Box YouTube channel. We also talked about Akira and how their ransomware abused Kerber roasting in the wild. If you'd like some more in-depth threat intelligence content, then be sure to visit Hack the Box's threat intelligence blogs where real attacker campaigns are walked through step by step. But that is all for now. Hit that like button, subscribe and tell us in the comments. What's the biggest impact one of your curb roasting attacks had? That's all folks, I'll see you later.